the base stock system the base stock system is used to model and manage the inventory of high value goods whose demand is generally very low in this system a replenishment order is placed each time a unit is consumed if the on hand inventory is less than or equal to the reorder point but not if the on hand inventory is greater than the reorder point i'll just explain that in a moment each time we place a replenishment order the order quantity is equal to 1 exactly 1 and the inventory position in the system is always the reorder point plus 1 in the above example which i'm going to explain we will see that the reorder point r equal to 3 and i equal to 4 now let me explain this graph here on the x axis time is shown and on the y axis the level of on hand inventory is shown you can see that the y axis goes below 0 so y values be below 0 refer to on hand inventory being negative which should be interpreted to mean that there are back orders in the system on hand inventory physical goods can never become negative but the negative values here mean that we have taken back orders which have to be fulfilled as soon as the physical stock of inventory arrives okay now let's understand how the inventory is changing and how inventory position changes with it so the on hand inventory here is 5 after some time there is a consumption from it the on hand inventory comes down to 4 after some time there is one more consumption happening here at this point of time the on hand inventory goes from 4 to 3 now you can see a line here which indicates that the reorder point in this base stock system has been fixed at 3 so since we have reached the reorder point at this time point it means that we should now place an order for replenishment so an order for replenishment goes and in this system the order for replenishment is always equal to 1 the quantity is always equal to 1 so one unit is ordered with the supplier as soon as this consumption happens when that happens we will now have a scheduled receipt a scheduled receipt of one unit will be present in the system so that would mean that the inventory position is the on hand inventory 3 plus the scheduled receipt of 1 equal to 4 so the on hand inventory is 3 the inventory position is 4 now let's go forward you can see that for some time the on hand inventory remains 3 then there is one more consumption here so when the consumption happens the on hand inventory level goes from 3 to 2 but we now place the next order for replenishment again with an order quantity of 1 unit when that happens we will have a scheduled receipt of 2 units what does that mean it means that now our inventory position will become the on hand inventory plus 2 2 plus 2 or 4 so you can see that the inventory position continues to remain at 4 even though on hand inventory level has changed from 3 to 2 our inventory position continues to remain at 4 so following the same logic whenever a consumption happens in future 2 an order quantity equal to 1 will be placed with the supplier and our inventory position will continue to remain at 4 it will never go below 4 the on hand inventory may go up and down now let's look at when a replenishment happens you can see that at this time point there is a replenishment and the on hand inventory goes back from 2 to 3 but at this time the because the inventory is added to the system we we can see that the scheduled receipt will decrease by one unit this again would ensure that the inventory position remains at 4 so the on hand inventory keeps going up and down as consumption and replenishment happen but the inventory position is either subtracted from or added to and it always continues to remain at 4 so this rule that the inventory position is equal to r plus 1 is always fulfilled in the system in the long run now to model the system and calculate the optimal uh, reorder point we make use of the unit holding cost and the unit back ordering cost the order cost or the reorder cost in comparison to these two are uh, is considered small and therefore ignored this is because the items are of very high value and they have very high holding or back ordering costs both the lead time and the demand can be considered as stochastic as in real life and therefore the lead time demand too would be stochastic owing to the high value of the good the demand rate is quite low and hence this is usually modeled as a discrete distribution so the optimal service level sl star it turns out to be cb divided by ch plus cb cb is the unit back ordering cost and ch is the unit holding cost again there is a 
elaborate mathematical derivation for this, which we do not go into in this video. The optimal inventory position, I star equal to R star plus one, is determined from the optimal service level using the inverse cumulative distribution function of the lead time demand, LD. Now let's do an example to understand all this better. Imagine that a distributor of the famous LG brand air compressors uh, has a store in Bangalore where the some stock of the SKU of 15 HP compressor pumps is maintained. Its daily demand for compressors is distributed as follows. You can see this discrete demand distribution. And in this, you can see that the daily demand has only two possible values, zero or one. So uh, it, either uh, no, nothing is demanded on a, in a given day or one unit is demanded and consumed. So you can also see the probabilities. And from this, you can learn that on 40% of the days, there is no demand at all. And on 60% of the days, there is a demand or consumption of one unit. The holding cost of this SKU is rupees 15,000 per unit per year. So that comes from the high value of the item. And the back order cost is rupees 12,000 per unit per year. Assume that a year has 300 working days. The, re the distributor replenishes his stock from the manufacturers, that is LG's warehouse, and the reorder cost is negligible. The lead time for replenishment, however, is seven days. If the distributor follows the base stock system, then find out these values, the optimal stock out probability and the service level, the optimal inventory position, the reorder point. And finally, if the manager decides to have a service level of 97%, which need not be the optimal service level, then what is the new reorder point? Now let's see how to solve this. For this, we begin with the daily demand distribution, which is given to us as zero and one with 0.4 and 0.6 as probabilities. The lead time is seven days. So we ask the question, what would be the lead time demand distribution? Given the daily demand distribution and the lead time of seven days, what would be the distribution of lead time demand? So if we think a little bit, then we can see that the lead time demand would have a minimum of zero, its value would be zero at minimum. That would happen when we have zero daily demand on all the seven days of the lead time, which is possible. And the maximum lead time demand is seven. So over seven days, you can have a maximum demand of seven units. And thus the lead time demand can have eight possible values, zero, one, two, all the way up to seven. So we can then ask the question, what are the respective probabilities of the lead time demand taking each of the values between zero and seven? And that would give us the lead time demand distribution. So to answer this, if we think a little bit, we'll realize that the demand on any given day can take only two possible values, zero or one. So you can think of this as a Bernoulli experiment with multiple trials. You can see that these two values are mutually exclusive and collectively exhaustive. And the outcomes of any given trial are independent of the outcome of any other trial. So you can compute the binomial probabilities. You can apply the binomial distribution and compute the probabilities of the lead time demand taking any of these eight possible values. So by doing that, uh, in, in doing that, we will use this formula, P of n equal to r is ncr, p raised to the power of r, q raised to the power of n minus r, where p is the probability of success in any given trial. We can define success to be a one and a failure, that is q, to be a zero. The n for this distribution is seven, the p is 0 0.6, and r can take values from zero to seven. And if we do that, this is what we get. The lead time demand can have these eight possible values, and the respective probabilities can be starting from 0 0.0016 because that is what you get when you put r equal to zero in this formula with p equal to 0.6 and q equal to 0.4. And from, from the individual probabilities of so the probability mass function, you get cumulative probabilities. So this can be done on Microsoft Excel. Excel has a function called binom.dist, binom.dist, which is self-explanatory where you can give the values of n, r, uh, and the p and eventually you'll be able to get these values. Now, uh, we are given information about the unit back ordering cost and the unit holding cost. From that, we can get the optimal service level. And that turns out to be by substituting these values appropriately, we get the optimal service level as 0 0.5556. And one minus this optimal service level is the optimal stock out probability, which turns out to be 0 0.4444. From that, we can calculate the optimal inventory position. This will be F inverse of 0.5556, where F is cumulative distribution function. Uh, you can see that if you were to get 
a cumulative value of 0.5556, you have to go to the lead time demand value of 4 and therefore the optimal inventory position is 4. From this, we get that the optimal reorder point is 4 minus 1, that is equal to 3. Now, we ask the question, what is the inventory position for a service level of 97%? So, we apply the inverse cumulative distribution for 0.97 and that from this table is attained at lead time demand equal to 6. So, the reorder point for a service level of at least 97% will be 6 minus 1 and that is equal to 5. So, in this video, we have seen how to model a base stock system. The key focus of the base stock systems model is to compute the optimal inventory position or the optimal reorder point and uh, then use it to make an appropriate decision in the system. So with this, we conclude our discussion on the base stock model. Thank you.